There are lies that we tell ourselves, and there are lies we tell the universe. The crew of the Aurora once used the word immortal, and the universe believed us for a while. But no matter the eons, years, millennia, you may live, no matter the wormholes, time jumps, or parallel dimensions, all things end. And it's hard to play so much with time without learning the shape of your own end. We know where we will be when we start to slow and choose to follow Nastya into the dark. We've lived so long together, perhaps it is only fitting we die alone. Johnny dies in a bar fight on some nameless backwater asteroid after countless lifetimes of carving through every sensation it is possible to feel. He is stabbed clean through the heart and this time for some reason it sticks. When he realizes what is happening he laughs for the first time in a millennia. Witnesses will say that they have never before seen someone so viciously excited to die. When you start your existence by burning down a planet, how the hell do you end it? In Ash's case, drunk as a skunk at the very end of time. Cast forward by some freak accident, they will watch as the stars wink out. And then they'll light a cigar, the last point of illumination in the universe. And drop the match into gasoline as a final fuck you. There is so much to know in this universe, so much to learn. But when her researches become monotonous and her observations are dull, Raffaella will decide to partake in one final experiment. Taking a fragment of the ship once known as Aurora, she will cast herself into that black hole. Beyond the event horizon there, maybe to die, maybe to learn something new, one last time. Gunpowder Tim feels the end coming for a while. His aim wanders by nanometers, and his explosions seem somewhat lackluster. And so he returns to a planet that he's been saving for a very special occasion. The one that builds the largest gunship existence we'll ever see. And he goes on a final rampage. Stars shatter at the thunder of his guns until, at last, he crashes into a space station. And he isn't wearing his seatbelt. Ivy will try to retire, spend her final centuries on a small library planet with those books that mean so much to her. Unfortunately, the library will do what they are so prone to and burn in a pointless war. Ivy falls, launching an escape pod piled high with ancient texts that scholars will someday say were actually quite a dull read. Marius has always approached the concept of immortality with a little bit more scepticism than the rest of us, so his end comes as less of a surprise. One day, at something of a loose end, he will decide to check on the Octa Kittens. Unfortunately, the purring horde has not been fed in many decades and devours him, head to toe, in 11.7 seconds. At least by my watch. Drumbot misses his first beat. He knows exactly what it means. He considers briefly the fire and bloodshed of his compatriots. But in the end, the only thing that feels right is to complete the cycle. And so he casts himself into the void. His body will float there forever. Far beyond the warmth of stars. Toy Soldier, of course, well, it was never real to begin with. And when all its friends are finally gone, it will decide to stop pretending. Pointless, ignoble deaths, the lot of them. 
But who that lived can really boast otherwise? Thank you for joining us on our journey. is cold the books are closed and our stories told no happy ever after for a tale so old laid in blood when the story is done But, but we're not quite dead, quite yet. And so, for the last time, we have one last song. 